Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. Around two years back, I recorded a video on Route 53 Resolver Endpoints, where I talked about Route 53 Resolver inbound and outbound endpoint. I talked about how you can resolve the DNS of the application running in AWS from your on-prem environment, and similarly, application running on your on-prem environment from your AWS by using this Route 53 Resolver endpoints. And I'll give you a quick demo as well on that. So in that demo, I used a single region, how you can use these endpoints in a single region and a single account. So in today's video, what we're gonna talk about, how you can scale these endpoints, how you can use these endpoints across multiple regions and multiple accounts. So with that, let's get started. So let's start with our first example where I have my application running in one of my region, uh, in my VPC, app1.example.com and my corporate network uh, servers in my corporate network need to resolve this DNS. So what we do, we create a Route 53 Resolver inbound end endpoint, which get an A9 my VPC. We update our DNS server on my corporate side, and then any request coming from the clients in the corporate network will go to the DNS. DNS will say, oh, this request need to go to the endpoint IP address. It comes there, and then and when my inbound endpoint will resolve by using the private host is one associated with the VPC and send the IP address of that application to your uh, DNS server back to your on -prem. Now what will happen if you have a, another application running in a different VPC like app2.example.com? How you do that? You have again you have private hosted zone associated with it which is kind of resolving the DNS name to your IP address of your application. Do we need to create another resolver endpoint? No, you don't need to create that. What you can do, you can simply associate this private hosted zone with the VPC where you have your resolver endpoint created. Now, what will happen that when the request for app2.example.com will come to this resolver endpoint, it will check the private hosted zone associated with this VPC. It will check this one, it will check this one, one by one, and then it will resolve to the IP address of that uh, application and send it back. Once the on-prem server has the IP address, there should be connectivity from your on-prem to that particular VPC. Once they have connectivity, they can reach to that application. So that's how you can scale your resolver endpoint across your multiple application within the same region. What will happen if you have another region? You have application app3.example.com in a different region. How you can do that? Again, you have a, your private hosted zone. So simply what you can do, you can associate that private hosted zone with the VPC in a different region. And that's kind of a feature we have that we can have one private hosted zone which can be associated with the multiple VPCs across multiple regions. So with that, you can now resolve to the app3.example.com as well. So a few things, one resolver endpoint, uh, PNI, you can do only 10,000 DNS queries per second. So while scaling, you have to keep that fact that number in mind because we don't want to meet the number like if you are uh, looking that you have maybe 50,000 or 40,000 uh, DNS queries per second so you need to have multiple endpoints and other limit we have is we can have only four endpoints per region per account so these two things you have to keep in mind while designing your solution and having multiple ENIs versus single ENI. Uh, next let's talk about multi-account so right now we talked about the multi-region within the same account but what will happen if you have multiple accounts? So I have here a single account where my route 50 resolver endpoint ENI is created. And if I have my application in a same or different region in a second account, so how we can do it? It's simple. Again, you will associate your private hosted zone with the same VPC where you have your resolver endpoint. The only thing is when you have multiple account or a cross account, you cannot associate the private hosted zone by using your console. You have to use the CLI. So once you do that, after that, you should be good to go and you can resolve your application DNS from your on-prem across any account, across any region by associating your private host zone with the VPC where your endpoint DNA is created. So now let's talk about our second type of uh, endpoint, which is my outbound endpoint. Here I have my application running in an on-prem environment, which is app.onprem.com and resources running in my VPC need to resolve this DNS name. So how we can do it, we'll create our outbound uh, endpoint which drops an ENI in my VPC. 
and we create our resolver rules and these rules is, are associated with this outbound end, uh, endpoint and it has a rule saying that any request for the DNS name app.onprem.com should use your on-prem DNS server to resolve it. So any request originating from this VPC will go to your route the resolver which checks your rules first and it rules says the DNS name of your DNS IP address of your on-prem DNS server and then use this outbound ENIs to send the request to your DNS resolver to get the resolve, to get the DNS name resolved. Now what happens if you have a second VPC where resources need to resolve the same uh, DNS name? Do I need to create another outbound ENI or endpoint? No, you don't need to do that. What you can simply do that, you can just associate these resolver rules with that particular VPC. Now any request now when it originates from this VPC, it goes to the route 53 resolver, which is dot two resolver in your VPC. It checks those rules and gets an IP address. And it also find out, okay, there is an outbound endpoint associated with it. So it sends the request to that outbound endpoint in that VPC and get it resolved from your DNS server. But after you get the IP address, this VPC should have a connectivity to your on-prem to reach to that IP address but you don't need any VPC to VPC connectivity to reach to this outbound ENI or outbound endpoint. That connectivity is taken care by AWS. So that's how you can scale it, the single outbound endpoint within the region. Uh, you can have one VPC or multiple VPCs. You can just associate that particular VPC with these rules and all those queries coming from your on-prem DNS name will eventually or automatically routed to your outbound ENI and it will send it back to your uh, on-prem server for resolution. What will happen if we have second region? In that case, you need to create another outbound endpoint here. You create another rule here because these rules are regional. You cannot share it across your different region. So similarly, you create another outbound endpoint and you create rules and then the resources within the VPC can resolve the DNS name in your on-prem environment. Now let's talk about the multi-account. Here we have our same example that my one of my uh, resources in my on-prem tried to resolve this DNS and the same setup that we talk, just talked about. Now if I have my second account, so what we can do it, we can share these resolver rules by using RAM, Resource Access Manager. So once these rules are shared, the second VPC can use the same rules to resolve it. Now the question comes that, can this VPC reach to this outbound ENI or outbound endpoint? Yes. So what's gonna happen that uh, you have these resources which try to resolve app.onprem.com. It goes to your Route 53 resolver and it check the resolver rule. Now resolver rule is internally associated with this outbound ENI. So it sends the request to this outbound ENI and you don't need to have any connectivity like I mentioned earlier these two VPC doesn't need to be connected with each other so now this on-prem dot uh, app dot on-prem dot com request goes to this outbound endpoint which will go to your DNS server and your DNS server will change it with the IP address so resolve it to IP address and send it back to your route 50 resolver outbound ENI and it will send back to your VPC so that's how you resolve your this request from DNS name to an IP address across a different account. So here you can see you don't need to create another outbound endpoint. You just share the resolver rules with the particular account where you want to resolve that DNS name. Like I mentioned, you don't need to have any VPCs to VPC connectivity. So that's all I want you to cover in this video, Fox, that I want you to show you how you can scale your resolver outbound and inbound endpoints across your different regions and different accounts. So hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. If you have any question, feel free to drop in the comment box and please do like and share our video. I'll be recording more uh, this architecture level videos in future. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.